Hey guys, Michael B. The Game Genie here. Thank you so much for watching. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about Arcade 1 Up The Fast and the Furious, Arcade 1 Up's most divisive release since, well, their last one. Anyways, The Fast and the Furious is the first new IP from Arcade 1 Up to come out this year, and while a lot of people are excited, there's been a lot of negative press going into it and some negative reviews, but on the other hand, some people are very happy with it. The question is, is it really that bad? And we're going to answer that right after this. So that's right guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Arcade 1UP, The Fast and the Furious, the most recent release from Arcade 1UP. We're going to take a look at the good, we're going to take a look at the bad, and there's a lot of it, and we're going to ask the question, is the cabinet overall really that bad but before we get into that i want to say thank you so much for checking out the video guys i always appreciate the support if this is your first time to the channel you like what you see go ahead subscribe click the bell for notifications all that youtube stuff for those of you who have been waiting for a new release from arcade one up featuring a new ip start your engines the fast and the furious is here currently available at Best Buy and racing fans all over the world are excited to see what this new title brought from Raw Thrills will bring to Arcade 1UP. But as I'm sure you guys are aware, prior to the cabinet's official release and people actually got their hands on it and we saw some of the first reviews, there was already a lot of controversy surrounding this cab. There were rumors that the cabinet would be linkable, would it or would it not, how would that work. It also came out that the cabinet was potentially only one game, a port of the two uh, Fast and the Furious and Fast and Furious Drift games from Raw Thrills that was absolutely butchered. So there was a lot of concern about this cabinet before it actually released. So what we had here was a period of excitement about a new release that FOMO is kicking in. You want to go out and get the newest Arcade 1UP cabinet. But there's also a lot of chit chatter across the community from people like me and others talking about potential negatives of the cabinet and potential positives. Now what I would normally do is I would actually go out and buy the cabinet myself if I was interested and then do a full review. Or at least I would go over to a friend's house or a store where they had it on display, test it out for myself, so I could give you a more, um, you know, first-hand response. But unfortunately, where the cabinet is not currently available in Canada, and from the sounds of it, is not going to be made available in Canada at retail, I can't do that. So what we're going to do today is take a look at the pros and cons from the community, and then kind of get our minds set on is this cabinet as bad as people are making out. So I'm sure most of you guys have been following along all the reviews that are currently out there on YouTube. We can't do this without first talking about She Lion Gaming who Arcade one up actually sent a review unit out to for her to take a look at the cabinet and her review is out and she was pretty positive about the cabinet. One interesting note though is one of the reasons she was sent the cab is obviously she's a big fan of the Fast and the Furious. But she has the actual physical cab herself. However, she did not compare the game against that. And initially, there were a lot of other reviews out there that were pretty positive as well about this release from Arcade 1 Up. But I didn't see a lot of people cover uh, some of the concerns that we had going into it, such as the fact that. Is this the original arcade ROMs or is it merely a port that might have been downgraded involving the graphics being bad? How does the linking technology work? Is it good or bad? And what about the games? That was until I saw 19K Fox's review and I have to say 19K Fox did an amazing review on these Fast and Furious cabs. Obviously he was a very big fan, very excited as he bought two of these, was excited about the Link Up experience. However, 19K Fox did not hold back from his disappointment from this release and really went hard after this one. So I kind of want to address some of the points that 19K Fox brought up because I feel they were right on the money and address the concerns that we had coming in. And not only did they show that some of these concerns were valid, it even went above and beyond explaining just how bad it is. Let's start off with the fact of Arcade 1UP The Fast and the Furious has two games, right? 
So guys, when this cabinet was announced, RK 1UP The Fast and Furious was going to have the two Fast and Furious games produced by Raw Thrills that showed up in the arcade. The first, of course, being The Fast and the Furious and the second being Fast and the Furious Drift. So we were getting two games. There were no more one game cabinets from RK 1UP, right? So guys, news quickly broke that the Fast and Furious Arcade 1UP wasn't actually a port of two games or the two ROMs, but it was merely a port of Fast and the Furious Drift that was going to be split into two parts because Drift actually had all the same tracks that the original Fast and Furious did, so what they decided to do was to chop that game into two parts to make the two parts on the Arcade 1UP cabinet. Now guys, this news came directly from Travis MCP. You guys all may know Travis from Arcade 1 Update, and he's a huge part of the Arcade 1 Up beta tester program. Travis was kind enough to share this information ahead of the release so people weren't disappointed upon getting the final product. Now this wouldn't be the first time that Arcade 1 Up and Raw Thrills have combined to make a game, a port of a game which advertises more games than are actually on the cabinet. As if you take a look at Buck Hunter, it advertises four games on the cabinet. However, when you go in, you will quickly find out it's actually only two games that are basically combinations to make it look like four. So I wasn't initially all that concerned about this fact because everybody seemed to love Buck Hunter. The issue there didn't seem to be a huge problem. Uh, it's still regarded as people's favorite RK 1UP shooting cabin today. People are generally happy with it. But what I didn't know was just how bad this actual indiscretion of taking two games out of one actually was. So then guys, we got 19K Fox's review and he was very good at basically showing a side-by-side -side comparison of the cabinets and the two games and you can actually see that this is the most blatant copy and paste I have ever seen. There is no element from the original Fast and Furious ROM that still exists here. Basically what happens is all the same tracks are in the second game, but they're modified to fit that game. So basically, look at it. I mean, it's copy and paste. This is basically two parts of Drift that are put together. Then when you take into consideration the gameplay experience, everything's been changed. All the tracks from the first game have been modified because they're actually the first tracks from Drift. The opening's different, the way the game controls, the physics, everything is Fast and Furious Drift. There is no element of the original Fast and the Furious retained here. Then 19K Fox went on to talk about the graphics and is the game good looking and as you can see did an excellent comparison from arcade emulation of what the original game looked like compared to what we're getting from arcade 1UP and this is certainly a massive downgrade. Obviously arcade 1UP's chipset is not able to handle the ROM that Fast and Furious runs on. I don't even know if an emulator exists that can properly handle the ROM for home consumption. So Arcade 1UP actually had a port and they downgraded the graphics significantly. Last but not least, 19K Fox did bring up his two player experience. As most people know, the big selling point of these cabinets and why some people went out and did the crazy thing of actually purchasing two uh, for this reason was you could actually link these cabinets. There was no online gameplay, but you could in fact link these cabinets and play with each other. But as he reported from his initial experience through Wi-Fi, there was some bad experience. Now, to be fair to Arcade 1 up here, what Fox showed from his experience seems to be somewhat of an anomaly. That's not how the two-player linked experience over Wi-Fi typically works. I know there's lots of other footage out there. Sheline herself did some linked through Wi-Fi footage, and it worked really well. But the experience Fox had, uh, it just didn't go well. He eventually did a direct link experience, and you can take a look at how he feels about it there. So in 19K Fox's follow-up video where he did the direct link directly into the router, you can see the gameplay experience is actually pretty much flawless. Him and his kid had a bunch of fun playing this with no issues, like he described in his original um, video and review of the experience. And I'm so glad he played this with his kid because they're playing Fast and the Furious. I mean, it is about family. So guys, after seeing 19K Fox's review, it should be pretty obvious to people, right? I mean, this release from Arcade 1UP is absolutely terrible. Is it really that bad? 
Oh, you bet you, but it's not that simple because it depends on what kind of a fan you are because I want to take you to some other people's experience and see what they thought. So guys, one of the people I've been following for their experience is Stephen Haywood, aka The Tech Buzz. He picked up this cabinet uh, as soon as it launched, entered it into his home arcade. You guys all know Stephen. Uh, he has a long history doing stuff with that games. He's a fairly critical reviewer, critical personality sometimes on YouTube. He got the Fast and the Furious, and his initial response was, he absolutely loved it. He's put it down in the basement with their kids. Everybody's having a really good time. He's really happy with the experience. And in fact, has told me he thinks this may be Arcade 1-Up's best cab to date. So guys, we already talked about She Lion's review. Here's another review to take a look at. This is our buddy Corny, the Cornercade, and his review for the Fast and Furious. He was also very happy with his experience. He really likes the cab. He's glad he's added it to his game room. His user experience is also a positive. So guys, what does all this mean? Is this a good release or a bad release? I guess it all depends on perspective. For those of you out there that are looking for arcade recreations, this is a piss poor release. I mean, think about it. This is a cabinet that advertised two games when it's by no means two games. Let's be honest here. This is a port of the Fast and the Furious Drift chopped into two. There are no elements of the original Fast and the Furious arcade game or ROM anywhere to be seen on this cabinet, which is absolutely frustrating because the earth on the cabinet is Fast and the Furious. So not only is it a port of an arcade game, it's a port of an arcade game then with the wrong earth. I don't know what they were thinking here, how this happened, but this sucks. And on top of that, this is not even a good port. This is a poor port of the arcade game because the fact that Arcade 1UP has underpowered hardware, they had to dumb down the graphical performance of the game, make it really, really bad in order to fit the arcade game on the cabinet. I hate this. Arcade 1UP, honestly, you're trying to fly too close to the sun, trying to punch above your weight class. Do not release games that are outside your physical capacity right now focus on what you can focus on we all want more 80s games they all work on your lower powered chipset just do that and then wait for technology technological advancements to catch up when you have more powerful hardware to tackle some of these other games you want to tackle or when there's actual commercial emulators available that can run the roms that you want them to run now on the other side of this it's kind of like NFL Blitz. NFL Blitz was the same thing. They probably had no business doing NFL Blitz because of all the issues where they had to change the game, all the modifications. It was a cluster. It was by no means the original arcade ROM. We did not get an arcade recreation there either. They even changed the side art. But here's the thing. NFL Blitz came out and most people were like, man, it's not the original game. But it's a lot of fun. And that's what you're seeing here. There's people out there that should be tearing this to shreds because the fact that it's a really shitty port that misses the mark on so many points. And it's a cheap port in the fact that it's a chop job. You're not even getting two games. But the majority of people are getting it are saying, I love it. I'm having fun. My kids are having fun. Link technology is fun. So, I mean, there it is. Is this a get or is it a pass? It depends on where you're from. If you're just looking to get <clears throat> a fun arcade racer with whatever the number of tracks are, I think it's 18, with a bunch of cars, you're not that worried about the graphics, you're excited about the link-up technology, this might be for you. But if you are a big fan of the original arcade game, or you're building an arcade in your basement, focusing on actually recreating the original arcade experience, like you're the kind of person that would go out and buy a replicate cabinet, this definitely isn't for you. As for me personally, doesn't really matter because I don't think I'm going to get a chance to be able to buy it. So I, I can't pass an opinion. All I can say is, from the looks of it, seems to be two sides of this story. People don't like it because of all the negatives. But at the same time, most people, the general consumer, pick it up. They don't give a shit about all that. And they're just like, hey, it's fun. I can race. It's a, you know, colorful looking racing game. Anyways, I ask you guys... Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Is Arcade 1UP the Fast and the Furious as bad as most people are saying it is? Or if you have picked it up, do you really have 
all these issues that other people are bringing up, or are you just playing it and saying, you know what, guys, it's fun. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, guys, thank you once again for watching. Hopefully my voice comes back at some point. This is Michael B. the Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time. Yeah.